So uh, that is very important. Once you make that decision, graph it and just run with it. So uh, this one is quite interesting. Agile, uh, an agilist or agile delivery lead versus Scrum Master. We know a Scrum Master has been along for, uh, around for a long time. And uh, if you're working, if you're actually keeping yourself uh, updated, you're going to realize that quite the nomenclature is changing from agile to agilist or simply agile delivery lead. So the, tra the traditional Scrum Master, as we know today, that title, I wholly believe that is going to become obsolete in the future because the role is evolving with enhancement and enchantment. So now when uh, companies are looking for an agilist or an agile delivery lead, which are emerging and merging the Scrum Master role and the delivery lead roles. Very interesting. So those roles, you would argue that they were created in agile to be separate roles, right? Uh, but the world is behaving, uh, the world is evolving all the time. The industries are evolving. And because of the evolution and the changes and the needs of those organizations, they realize that it's important to, for that particular role to, to evolve. So an agile is, uh, if you're conversant, it simply means that you should be conversant with multiple frameworks or methodologies, whether it's safe. Or, you know, the, the key three that uh, most uh, organizations use are safe, Scrum, Kanban. Now, all the, there are many other methodology, uh, methodologies or frameworks out there, you know, the um, test-driven development, feature-driven development, uh, you know, extreme programming, DevOps, or we're using, of course, dynamic systems and development method. And many others that, uh, uh, that you, you all know, those who are in, this, uh, in the industry, you know. So when, uh, when I look, I talk about dynamism and flexibility in the software delivery life cycle, because uh, you want to mix and match those methodologies. And uh, I've, I've done that successfully because uh, I look at the scope that we have, uh, the, uh, not just the scope, but the project that we are trying to deliver on. And then I could always borrow from one methodology, methodology or the other to enhance Scrum, Safe, or Kanban. So like, for example, if you have uh, the uh, behavior-driven development, uh, you are thinking about the Gherkin format, and which the Gherkin format, which is essentially uh, looking, you develop, you do a test case first based on the action of uh, the user and see how that test case will behave. And based on that, whether it's going to fail or pass the test, based on that, then you can write the story. And then from the story, you can now write the code. That is what the, the whole idea about the Gherkin format, which is very, very interesting and they're good to be used in uh, projects that are very new in the organization and complex. So uh, uh, X, SP or Xtreme programming, uh, where you have, the, you have a pair programming, which I've used in some of my teams when I realized that there are a lot of uh, def defects or bugs happening. So I simply uh, get two, two team members, they pair and work on the project. And then uh, once they are now very conversant with the project and doing well, then they part their ways and they can work uh, not in silo, but they can work separately because we will be having all, you know, the daily standup and other ceremonies that we sync. Then Kanban uh, is a great framework that uh, for vulnerabilities. I, I, I always recommend Kanban in uh, projects that are very volatile. Uh, for instance, I've used it in projects, uh, uh, teams that handle mostly defects and teams that are doing a lot of uh, maintenance, as well as uh, one of my teams that was virtually uh, was virtually running the architectural runway. 
So they will have to make switches from one environment to the other and do the maintenance. So when you are having those kind of projects, it means that uh, the work is very volatile. So you cannot plan work into springs because if you are just applying Scrum where you plan work into your spring, and usually you don't want to change your scope when the spring is planned, and that's how spring, I mean, uh, Scrum is, uh, is designed to work so that you can avoid a lot of, a lot of uh, scope change. So you want to apply Kanban. I have even done a combo of Scrum band and very successfully with that too. So uh, when you, you want to ev evaluate and measure the effectiveness of your project and adjust ac accordingly, that is uh, uh, the way to go with those ones. Bye.